Hi everyone, today we're going to do a complete walk through all the different settings on the Godox V1, otherwise known as a Flashpoint R2, and these settings will be very similar, if not exactly the same, on the Godox V860 series. So let's get started. All right, looking at the top row here, we have our four function buttons, and these functions can change depending on uh, what mode or what we're doing on the flash, and it's indicated by the uh, four squares just above each button. So the first button here is TCM, this one is the sync button, and these two are blank, meaning they're not assigned right now. Then next we have the menu and lock button. So if we short press the menu button, that'll take us into the menu, and I'll walk you through all these settings later. And if we press and hold this, it will lock the buttons so that you can't change any of the settings other than just test fire the flash. And then you press and hold it to unlock. And this is actually pretty handy, and I'll explain why later. Uh, and then, of course, I just demonstrated the test uh, flash button here. And then over here, we have the uh, wireless selector button. And this will change the flash from just the on-camera mode that it's in now to uh, transmitter mode or master mode, as it's called sometimes, to slave mode or receiver mode. Uh, it's one and the same. And on my flash, it says slave here. Some flashes, actually, it says RX for receiver mode. But again, they're the same thing. And then we have a physical on-off switch. And then we have our selector wheel here. And uh, the wheel itself is clickable in four directions, top, down, left, right. So if we click over here on the right, that'll uh, get go into the uh, modeling light settings. Clicking to the bottom will change the mode of the flash from, say, manual, multi-sync, back to TTL. And it just toggles through them like so. And then we have our zoom function up here. And then over here, we have the power setting here, plus or minus. So if we want to adjust uh, the power output or the exposure compensation, etc., we can do that with this button. And then in the center, we have our set button. Now, the uh, test flash button is green right now. That means the flash is fully charged and ready to fire. However, if it's red or blinking red, that means it's still charging and not ready to fire or there's an error. If it's blinking green, that means the flash has gone into standby mode. And if it's blinking green, that means the flash has gone into standby mode and either uh, tapping the shutter button on your camera will usually wake it up or you can just push any of the buttons on the back of the flash and it'll also wake the flash up out of standby mode. And then finally, the two center function buttons here, if we press and hold these, it will reset the flash back to its factory defaults as indicated here, confirming we've reset the flash to the factory defaults. Okay, let's take a look at the LCD. Right now we're just in flash mode, meaning it's uh, for on-camera use and it's telling us that the flash is set for TTL. This M stands for manual mode, meaning it's the flash zoom feature is being manually adjusted to 14 millimeters. And on this flash, the default is uh, micro four thirds uh, focal lengths. So this will handle from 14 millimeters. And if I press the uh, zoom button, I can adjust it up to a 52 millimeter lens. Or I can uh, dial it all the way back and just have it set to auto. So I'll just leave it on auto. The speaker icon here just tells the flash to beep once it's received a full charge and is ready to fire again. And there's our battery icon. And then we have our flash icon. Uh, and this just tells us if the flash head is rotated on the top. So we have our standard mode like this, right? The flash is facing forward. And if you look at the icon, you'll see that there's no arrow here above it. However, as soon as we rotate the flash or tilt it up, you'll see a little arrow here. All right, then down here we have a distance scale. Uh, you can pretty much ignore this, but the idea being is telling you the range that the flash can fire in, the minimum range and the maximum range. Uh, I haven't found this too reliable, so you can ignore that. Okay, the function buttons are currently signed to TCM and sync. So TCM basically toggles between TTL mode and manual mode like so. But it actually has one more feature that uh, I, I haven't found documented. Maybe it is, but it's actually uh, can be pretty handy. Uh, and I'll explain that in a moment. And then next to this, we have our high speed sync button. And you'll see a little icon pop up here telling us that the flash is now in high speed sync mode. 
Uh, and most cameras are high-speed sync compatible these days, but your camera does need to be high-speed sync compatible to use this feature. Okay, now let me tell you something special about this TCM mode here. Not only does it toggle between TTL and manual mode, but it also shows you the power you used if you fired in TTL mode first. And this can be really handy, and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, I have my flash in TTL mode, and I'm just going to take a quick picture. And then let me show you what happens. If I push the TCM button now, it's showing me 1 over 256, meaning it used the minimum power to take that last picture in TTL mode. All right, so I put the flash back in TTL mode, but I'm going to raise the aperture to f11 and take another picture. And that's going to require the flash to use more power, right? Because we use a much higher aperture. And if I push the TCM button now, you can see that it shows I used 1 16th power when I took the picture that time. So this feature can be really handy. Uh, and I'll give you an example. Like if you're taking pictures in TTL mode and they're a little bit dark, you can click on the TCM button and see if the flash is firing at full power or not. Because if it is firing at full power, then you know you'll need to adjust one of your other settings, either your aperture or your ISO, to get your images a little brighter. Or if it's only firing at half power and you're not getting the exposure you want, then you might need to make some other adjustment, right? Either dial in some flash exposure compensation, or again, maybe adjust your aperture and or ISO. Now, while the camera's on the flash, one more thing I want to show you is, as I'm adjusting my aperture, you can see the aperture adjusts on the uh, screen here. It shows you right here. And if I take a picture real quick, and I hit the TCM button, it'll tell me that I was at f6.3 half power. So you will need to have a lens that has the electrical contacts that tell the camera and the flash what aperture you were using. But again, it's a very handy feature uh, in the TCM mode so that you can see if you have any wiggle room either in your aperture or flash power to make any adjustments. Now while you're in TTL mode, if you want to make any flash exposure compensation adjustments on the flash directly, you just have to push the uh, plus or minus button here and then you can go up and down this way or you can rotate the dial in either direction. And it looks like, and it, it jumps in thirds of a stop, so you can do plus or minus three stops exposure compensation. And a lot of times you can control this through the camera's uh, control panel as well. But just be conscious that if I dial in plus one flash exposure compensation in my camera, then I dial plus one exposure compensation in the flash directly, I'm actually going to get two stops of flash exposure compensation, so it's additive. Okay, that's pretty much everything for TTL mode. So let's go into manual mode. And you'll notice here now we're showing the power output that we have set for the flash. And if we push the plus or minus button on the wheel, we can go up and down in full stops, or we can rotate the wheel to adjust in tenths of a stop. And then we just click the set button once we have the power that we want. Now you may have noticed we have a new function button here, S1, S2. So if I push this, I get S1, push again S2, push it again, it turns off, and it just toggles between those three settings. And what this does is activate the optical trigger on the front of the flash. And this optical trigger has two different modes. S1 tells the flash to fire whenever it sees another flash fire at the same time. S2 tells the flash to fire on the second flash that it sees. And of course, this turns off the optical trigger. Now I want to show you one little oddity here is that when the flash is on the camera like I have it now, if I go into manual mode, you'll notice that the S1, S2 uh, function button is disabled. There's just nothing there, right? And then when I take the flash off of the camera, if I toggle back to TTL and manual, the S1, S2 still doesn't show. So what I've had to do is turn the power off and back on with the flash off of the camera. And then I can go into S1, S2. So as I said before, the difference between S1 and S2 is 
When the flash is in S1 mode, it'll fire on the first flash it sees via the optical trigger, and in S2, it'll fire on the second flash it sees via the optical trigger. So let me give you a scenario. Let's say I have the TT350 here set up to fire in manual mode at, say, half power. And then I'm going to set up my V1 here to be in S1 mode, and I'm going to dial in whatever power I need accordingly. So when I take a picture with this camera, the flash will fire one time, and trigger this flash to fire at the same time so I have two lights right on whatever subject I'm taking a picture of. However, if I have this flash set to TTL mode, when I push the uh, shutter button and take a picture, it's actually going to fire twice. Very quickly, sometimes we can't perceive it with our eyes, but it's going to fire once and measure the exposure of the scene, and then it's going to fire a second time and actually take the picture. So in that scenario, you want to set the uh, V1 flash to be in S2 mode because you don't want it to fire when it sees the first flash off of this camera because that's the TTL uh, exposure metering flash. You want it to fire when it sees the second flash when this camera's actually taking the picture. So that's, that's the scenario when you would use S2 is you have this flash or another flash in TTL mode you want to set this flash into S2 mode so it fires at the same time. So if you're taking pictures and you don't understand why you're not seeing the light output from this flash, it's most likely because you have this set to S1 and you have your other flash either on camera or elsewhere set to TTL. All right, let's look at multi-sync mode. And basically this is a specialized feature. I don't use it very much. But what you're doing is basically the flash is a manual mode. So you set the uh, power here but then you can set how many times you want the flash to fire and how many times per second you want the flash to fire. So in this case, we're firing at 1 1 28th power. We want the flash to fire five times and do that five times per second. So you're going to need a one second exposure to see all five flashes come from this flash. If I change this to, say, uh, 10, now I'm telling the flash to fire 10 times, 5 times per second. You're going to need a 2 second exposure to see all 10 flashes. So again, this is a very specialized feature. Uh, and of course, you can adjust this. If I do this, now I'm saying fire 10 times and then do that 10 times per second. So I'll need at least a 1 second exposure to use this setting. And let's see, we can go as high as uh, 100 times per second. And we can set this as high as also, what is that, 40 times. So in this case, we're telling the flash to fire 40 times, 100 times per second. So for this setting, I would need less than a half a second exposure to see all of the flashes fired out of this flash. All right, now let's look at one of the special features of this flash. We have a modeling lamp built in. And we can turn it on. We click the set button. And now the modeling lamp has come on. And I can adjust the power brighter or darker just by rotating the dial here, like so. And then once I have the setting that I want, I can just uh, go back here using this button. And the modeling lamp stays on until I turn it off. So to turn it off, I just go back in and I just click the set button. And this toggles the modeling lamp on and off. So we'll just leave it off for now. Now another special feature of this flash is it has a built-in transmitter and receiver that's compatible with all of the Godox uh, transmitter receiver X system. So you can use this flash to trigger other flashes or you can use this flash as a receiver or in slave mode to uh, receive uh, signals from other triggers and flashes. And you toggle the mode that the transmitter receiver mode by using the wireless trigger mode here. So now we're in uh, master or transmitter mode. And now we're in uh, receiver or slave mode. And on, again, my flash says slave. Some flashes say RX for receiver mode. And it's nice because it changes color. So in transmitter mode, we have the same blue color. And then when we go into receiver or slave mode, it changes to this amber orange color. All right, let's put this flash into the transmitter mode where it's acting as the master flash. And this flash can control uh, up to three groups of other flashes. 
and each group can contain multiple flashes. So you might have two flashes on group A, three flashes on group B, and maybe only one flash on group C. The flash refers to itself as M, or the master flash. And you can see right now it's set for manual mode at 1 256 power. Also, you can see that we're on channel 21 when we're acting as a transmitter, so you need to make sure all your other flashes are on channel 21, uh, the receiver flashes. And the reason for that is because a lot of times you might be working in an area where other photographers are using Godox flashes, and you want to make sure you're on a different channel. Otherwise, you could be firing off each other's flashes uh, when you least expect it. You can also go into the menu and further uh, differentiate your, your flash uh, with an ID number. So you might be on channel 21, ID 10, uh, and that'll further differentiate your flash from the other uh, flashes in the area. Now, the way you control each group, including the master flash, is via the function buttons. So we can change how this master flash works by pushing this function button, and if we push it again, it just toggles through the different modes. So we have TTL, manual, and off. So if we want to be in uh, TTL mode, we can dial in exposure comp, or we can go into manual mode, and we can change the power output. Again, in tenths of a stop, or I can just push up to jump in full stops up and down like this. So let's say I have the power set here that I want. Then I can go into B. And again, this just toggles between manual TTL and off. So we'll just put B in manual mode and set that to whatever. And then I go to B. Let's say I want that in TTL mode with a little exposure comp, and then C. I'll put this into manual mode at full power. I mean, just, just for example, or I can turn it off. All right, to set up your other Godox flashes, and let's just assume for now you have other V1s, we'll take this away and we'll bring our other Godox flash in, and we want to put it into slave mode or RX mode, depending what your flash says here. And if we look at the screen, you can see that we're on the same channel, 21, slave mode, and we're in group A. And we can change this to group B or C by pushing this function button, which now says GR for group. And now we're in group B, we're in group C, but you have to watch out because look, we have group D and we have group E. So the Godox V1 is actually capable of being in up to five groups, but actually only controlling up to three groups. Because if we go back to the transmitter mode, you can see we only have A, B, and C. It cannot control D and E. But if it's going to be on the receiving end, you can uh, control this and put it into group D and E. And the only way you can do that really is if you have one of these uh, radio triggers that has up to five groups. In which case, you can assign this to one of those groups, D or E. Now, to change the channel that this flash operates on, and it doesn't matter if it's acting as a transmitter or a receiver, once you set the channel, that's going to be the channel for both modes. You actually have to go into the menu. So we'll go into the menu, and we're going to scroll down to CH or channel, click the set button, and then here we can change it to whatever we want. And click the set button, and then go back out. And now you can see we're on channel 18. But just be careful and make sure that your transmitter or your trigger is also on channel 18. But you can see it changed it for both the transmitter and the receiver of this flash when I changed it in the menu. Now there's an additional setting called ID where if you go in to the menu again, go down to ID, click the set button, and then rotate your dial. And let's just put this on 5, for example. Click the set button and go back out. It doesn't show on the screen, but now you're on channel 18, ID number 5. So if you have two photographers on the same channel 18, 
You can further differentiate your flashes by the ID number if you need to. All right, now let's go into the menu and look at all the settings. And I've gone back up to the top here. And the first one is asking, do you want to use uh, units in meters or in feet? And this is primarily for that distance scale. So I don't really care about this, uh, but you can set it here. Then the next one is your zoom setting scale. So are you going to scale it for Micro Four Thirds cameras or for full frame? And just click the set button and rotate the dial and you can go back and forth. But let's set it to Micro Four Thirds for now. Then let's get, go back out. And if you look at the, the zoom right now, it's set to manual mode at 14 millimeters. So if I push on the zoom button here, I can adjust this up to 52 millimeters. So we've seen that before. And this is assuming you're using a Micro Four Thirds camera, which has a narrower field of view. So you need to use wider angle lenses to, um, to get a wider field of view than say 14 millimeters on a full frame camera. So this scale is designed to help you um, sort of uh, correlate those two things or align those two numbers together. Now, if we go back in and change this to full frame or 135, let's go back out. You'll see that the manual, uh, the, the zoom is still in manual, but now it says 28 millimeters instead of 14 millimeters. And that's because full frame cameras, uh, you have to double the focal length to get the same field of view. So that's all that does. It doesn't actually change the angle of light or the zoom it's just changing the scale here to work with full frame or micro four thirds. All right, so let me change this back to micro four thirds because that's what I primarily use. And then let's go into standby. So this is whether you want the flash to go into standby mode or not. And this is uh, the setting for when you want the flash to go into standby mode. So you can click set and you can tell it to stand by after 60 minutes or after 30 minutes, 60 minutes is fine. The next item is scan. And basically what this does is it tries to find an empty channel for you automatically. So if I click start, I forget how long this takes, but if I click start, it doesn't take that long, I guess. It's gonna start scanning to see if any channels are being used and show you a channel that's not being used and ideally if it's like a wireless network it'll find the strongest signal that's available but anyhow this is telling me all these are these are uh, eight of the channels that I can pick from and you can see I had picked uh, channel 1 uh, 21 earlier so that's when we go into here click set and I'll change this to channel 21 click set and then let's go to ID. I can change it back to channel five or whatever, but I'm gonna leave that off. I never use it. And then beep is whether or not when you fire the flash, uh, once it recycles and fully charges and is ready to fire again, it's gonna beep and that's all that is. Uh, and I usually leave this on because I like to hear it beep so that I know it's ready to fire again. Okay, and this is the uh, backlight here. So do you want it to stay on all the time or do you want to turn it off or do you want it to stay on for 12 seconds then automatically turn off? And that's what was happening in earlier in this video is I had originally had it set to 12 seconds and then I had to keep pushing the set button to turn it back on so you could see it. But I can turn it off or turn it on. And I'll just leave it on for now. But normally I have this set to 12 seconds. And then finally is the LCD. And this just adjusts the contrast of the LCD. So if I want the letters to be very dark, I can set it to plus three. Or if I want the letters to be a little bit lighter, I'll set it to negative three. It, it may be a little hard to tell in the video, but this is lighter. Uh, zero is fine. All right, and that's everything I know about the Godox V1 or Flashpoint R2 or similarly the Godox uh, V860 series. Uh, the settings should be very similar, if not exactly the same. And um, in future videos, I'll be showing you how to use these flashes together, along with uh, I'm going to be doing a tutorial on this uh, trigger. So 
definitely subscribe stay tuned for that hit the bell notification and if you found these videos helpful uh, consider buying me a coffee or making a small donation in the links below they're greatly appreciated but i appreciate you watching and i hope to see you again soon